Around the same time as his 1974 ERISA laws were introduced, another piece of legislation was passed that deregulated broker commissions. The brokerage firms, they had high price fixed commissions. They were about to be crushed. A smart entrepreneur saw this as an opportunity to reach all the potential investors that didn't fit into this high price club of Wall Street and their high commissions. His name was Charles Schwab and his firm would evolve into becoming America's largest discount broker. So suddenly, the average investor had access to 24-hour quotes and all types of resources to being the best investor possible. In the decades since Schwab formed, there's been a continued focus on financial innovation to benefit uh, each of the client investors. Full disclosure, I have my personal counsel with Charles Schwab and my clients are custodian uh, at Schwab. What Schwab did for the brokerage industry, John Bogle and Vanguard did for the mutual fund industry. Now, fast forward past disco, rock, metal, grunge, pop, hip hop, and arrive today with Vanguard and Schwab as fierce competitors for this exact same clients. Vanguard started as a mutual fund company and quickly became a powerhouse. The term index fund was an invention of John Bogle, and today it's the single biggest way for investors to generally invest. His basic premise was this that it's a fool's errand to try and beat the market, a net of high fees using professionals. And it's better to offer a diversified basket at the lowest cost possible. Warren Buffett is one of the world's greatest investors and he agrees with uh, Mr. John Bogle, suggesting that most investors are just better off investing in a low cost index fund. In the intro to this video, I stated uh, that ETFs were better to own the mutual funds. Vanguard and Fidelity are the two biggest mutual fund creators and they must agree with my assessment by evidence of them closing down mutual funds and their increased creation of ETFs. Today's clients have equally evolved and low cost has been the attraction to many wealthy investors. But many a savvy investor has gained uh, riches from just frugality. Got rich being cheap. In many ways, the digital platforms are far superior to the mentality behind walnut paneled walls. I know because I aspired for years to one day work around walnut. In 1994, my career in finance started with cold calling amongst many other brokers from the pit. Ah, a lovely reverence of good times, the pit. Someday, my own cubicle. Oh, and possibly if I am worthy, an office covered with walnut paneling with a view. Oh, success! Mom would be so proud. Yeah, I did that corner office, great money, titles, prestige, yada, 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 yada. I also put in countless 80 hour weeks for years. So back to my point on expenses and frugality, I've worked for a lot of wealthy people and over 25 years and everybody I've ever met, including me, wants value for what we spend our money on. Less is almost always better. Bad service is not worth any price, like weak old sushi. The exact opposite to low cost is exorbitant costs from, let's say, private hedge funds. Stanley Druckenmiller, star manager, has reportedly returned his clients 30% a year for three decades. And that of his 25% fee and annual 2% annual maintenance fees. Are these numbers accurate? I don't know. I'm not a client and he doesn't share his numbers with Google. But look up Forbes 500 list and it's filled with hedge fund managers. See who's been buying what sports team or high profile real estate and artwork. It's often a hedge fund owner. And why not? That is capitalism. Don't like them? Then go somewhere else. Wrong or right. Two different investors, two different investor types and fees. My point is to be the best investor possible, don't just focus solely on the expense of an investment, but also consider the net return potential. Another fact that affects fees is liquidity, which means on any given trading day, how many shares trades hands. A position that trades only a, a few shares a day, that's bad, because it means that's poor liquidity. And trading costs are gonna be higher. High liquidity often means lower trading costs with tighter bid ask spreads. In the prior hedge fund example, wealthy investors are happy to pay high fees if their net returns also have consistent high net numbers. 
And that's one reason why the Bernie Madoff scam was so convincing to those who desired consistency in their returns. Don't paint hedge funds as bad because many of them might be behind your teacher, sheriff, or other pension. Just like athletes, pop singers, authors, and actors, they are compensated based on their value to others. This is capitalism.